All right, so uh, this is actually part B of the other scatter plot video I have on this channel. Um, the first thing we did on that video was we found the rule, and then we answered a couple of uh, you know sort of generic linear relationship type questions that you get with this. But the other thing that is important to talk about now is the domain and the range of this data. Okay, so we we have our data over here in this table. Um, we have our rule. So remember what this does is it it's it's finding the relationship between the amount ordered and then the cost per unit. So what this is showing is that the more you order, um, the amount per unit is actually going down, which makes sense. The more you buy, the more you save. But what happens to these models is, remember, they're just models to try to describe what's going on, and the models only work so far. And that's where domain and range, that's what they tell us, is this rule will work as long as things are between this and this. And you get a pretty good idea of what that is usually from the data. So we could see two of the questions from last time was it was saying, if someone orders five units, so just five units, what will their cost per unit be? So this person would have to pay $407 per unit. Whereas when somebody else orders 60 units, they're only paying $77 per unit. Once you start to get to the ends of the line, like in other words, once we're up in this zone over here and in this zone right here, usually what happens is our model starts to fall apart. It starts to get a little wacky. Like for example, if we look at our rule, we can see that the slope is negative six. So we know if we keep going, I mean, at 60, it's already down to 77, but maybe I wanted to order a hundred parts. It probably would come out being a negative number, which would mean that these people are actually paying me to take their parts. So this rule has to have some boundaries where it's true. And so that's what we're going to talk about now. So the domain is talking about where on this axis is the information true. And usually it's pretty safe to say, especially on one of these down, these down sloping lines, um, you could go to zero, but that's a little bit crazy. So you know, once the price starts to reach a point where you're like, wow, that sounds really cheap, you can cut it off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it off here um, at 50. So I'm going to say, you know what? It goes to 50. And also, I don't really have it. You'll notice that there's no data points for anything up here. So I really don't know what it's going to do once it gets over there. I only know what it's doing from here. So you can see I drew here with the pen. It goes from 20 to 50. And just like a compound inequality, you can say that the A is between 50 on the high end and 20 on the low end. So that's my domain. And now let's talk about the range, which in this case, case would be C. So here you can see that at 20, it looks like it's at 350. So the highest point is 350. And since I called it here at 50, 50 looks like, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm eyeballing it now, it looks like it's at about 150 if I follow this all the way across. So all of this data is between 350 and 150. So I can write that out. You have 350 on the high end and 150 on the low end. Um, that's usually what I'll do. Um, sometimes there's, you can stretch it out a little bit further. Like if I wanted, somebody could actually say, well, I'm going to make mine go to like maybe 10 points or 13. That would be okay. A lot of this stuff isn't really set in some stone, but in the general sense, the rule's going to really get crazy once you, you go out of this zone. Now, sometimes you get rules that will go up. So let's say we're talking about a tree. So let's say the tree was planted here and the scatter plot's going like this. So the tree's gradually increasing like that. Well, your, your domain could be from zero when the tree was first planted. And then you're going to have to figure out what's too high for a tree. I mean, is a tree going to keep gro growing until it leaves the atmosphere and it's in outer space? Of course not. That makes no sense. So once the tree gets to be, you know, maybe two, it depends on the tree, of course, but maybe it's 200 feet high. You'd say, well, when it's 200, that's where I'm going to call it. Wherever that occurs is where the end of the domain is. 
So it all the really it's it's really dependent on the situation in terms of how you do this. But going back to this, it's pretty safe a lot of times to to just say, look, the only the only place I have data is for what's here, and and then do your domain and range based off of where the points are, and so that's how you can get a rough idea of the domain and range to go along with your mathematical model.